Derek Sanderson Jeter, the captain, New York AL, 1995 through 2014. I, uh, I forgot how good that feels. <laughs> Thank you to uh, the baseball writers, all but one of you, who voted for me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, those that are here with us today, the ones that couldn't make it, uh, the men I played with, I played against four, and looked up to and admired. You know, when, when the induction ceremony was canceled, and then later it was postponed. Uh, you know, everyone told me, you know, don't worry about it. It's going to happen eventually, and it's going to feel the same. Uh, you were right, but I do want to point out one thing. As you saw earlier, you know, the Hall of Fame is special because of those who are in it. And, and we've lost way too many Hall of Famers over the last 20 months. And these are all Hall of Famers that would have or could have been here. And uh, selfishly, for that reason, it's, it's not the same. Because when, you know, everyone asks about nerves, they, they assume it's because of a speech, what I may say or not say. The number of people in attendance are watching at home. No, no, no. The nerves are because of these guys behind me right now and all of those that are a part of the Hall of Fame family. Because, you know, the great thing about baseball is it's history. And that's what makes it so special. I, I want to share two quick stories, two special moments I had with the Hall of Fame family early on in my career. You know, the first was in 1996. After we won the World Series, I was attending the uh, baseball writers, the New York chapter of the baseball writers' dinner in New York. And uh, I was seated on the dais next to someone I had never met before. And we sat there for roughly three hours. And, and if I'm going to be honest with you, I, I can't recall any details of our conversation. Uh, but I, I do know it was a time that I'll always cherish. Because, you know, when you talk about class and you talk about elegance, uh, this person was, was and still is the epitome of it. Uh, the fact that she even knew who, who I was and was willing to listen to what I had to say made me feel like I was the most special person in the world. Uh, you know, that person was Mrs. Rachel Robinson. The uh, second moment was in 1999 while I was at the All-Star Game in, in Boston. And the pregame, they were, they were honoring the All-Century players. So all the players past and present we're gathering around Ted Williams so he could throw out the first pitch. And, and I sort of just hovered around the back because, quite frankly, I was in awe and I didn't want to get in the way. I felt a tap on my shoulder. I turned around and someone told me, you know, I wanted to meet you. And I said, you wanted to meet me? That was the very first time I met the great Hank Aaron. Now, you know, you might, you might wonder what's the reason I bring these moments up. It's because these two moments in particular is when I realized that it's more than a game in just a sense. You know, the greatest people and players in this game, the Hall of Fame family, they're watching. So I wanted their approval. You know, during my career, I wanted to make Mrs. Robinson proud. I wanted to make Hank Aaron proud. I wanted to make all you behind me proud. Not of statistics, proud of how I played the game, how I carried myself, and how I respected the game and those before and after me. I fell in love with the Yankees. You know, I was watching games in the summer with my grandmother, Dorothy Connors, who is here today, uh, in West Milford, New Jersey. You know, I played wiffle ball in her yard in full Yankee pinstripes, pretending to be Dave Winfield. You know, I'd break a window occasionally and she'd be all right with it. You know, and at the same time, you know, I learned the importance of going to work every single day and doing your job no matter what from my grandfather, William Sonny Connors. You know, when I, when I got a little older, we used to jump the fence in my house in Michigan and I walked to the baseball fields, Kalamazoo Central High School, and we practiced as a family. My dad pitched, my mom and my sister Charlie shagging in the outfield, and then we'd go and do the same thing for her on the softball field. You know, that was fun for us. You know, it's what we enjoyed. It's, it's how we bonded as a family, and quite frankly, it's how I got better. But, uh, you know, it was more than just practice. You know, it was the lessons that my parents taught me. Mom, you taught me any dream is attainable as long as you work harder than anyone else. You know, you drilled that in my head over and over and over, and you led me to believe it. You told me never to make excuses. You wouldn't allow me to use the word can't. Reggie Jackson, uh, Reg, look, uh, we were just talking about this this morning, um, but every time Reggie would come spend time with the team, you know, I'd call him over to my locker and I'd say, hey, Reg, sit down, what you got for me today? And then we'd go back and forth and I'd get on him. And Reg, you remember your response? Your response was, you're not a Hall of Famer yet. So I guess I can get on you now, huh? 
my managers, Buck Showalter, Joe Girardi, and especially Mr. T. And Mr. T, thanks for taking a chance on me and trusting me at such a young age, or at least making me think you trusted me. My teammates, my brothers, and I was, best, I was blessed to play alongside aside some of the best to ever play the game. Uh, you know, some who are in the Hall of Fame, some behind me right now. I especially want to point out Gerald Williams, Jorge Posada, Mariano, Andy, Bernie, Tino, Cece, Hideki. I mean, you guys in particular were special to me because I never had to worry about what your number one priority was, and that was winning. The boss, Mr. Steinbrenner. And, and the entire Steinbrenner family, Joan, Hank, Hal, Jenny, and Jessica. And thank you for always making me feel like I was a part of your family. And throughout my playing career, more importantly, beyond, there hasn't been a day when you guys haven't made us feel like, my entire family made us feel like we were part of your family. You know, being able to play parts of 23 seasons with one organization, the only organization I ever wanted to play for was because of the boss and because of the family. You know, everyone mentions how difficult it is to play in New York, and especially for the Yankees. You know, the boss, he'd push you, he'd challenge you. At times, he'd publicly embarrass you. Um, but you know what, he, he did it to bring out the best in you. He wanted to know if I had what it took to play for and ultimately lead the Yankees. You know, I was able to have success because we had a shared mindset. Only thing that mattered was winning. And I had one goal during my career, and that was to win more than everyone else. And we did. Which brings me to the Yankee fans. <clears throat> you know, there was only one thing in my life I wanted to be, and that was a shortstop for the New York Yankees. And now I'm a Yankee forever. And w without question, you know, you helped me get here today as much as any individual I've mentioned. You know, you can't be fooled. You know, you're passionate, you're loyal, knowledgeable, vocal, challenging, and, and supporting. You know, there's a, there's a huge responsibility that comes with wearing a Yankee uniform. You know, just because you have it on doesn't guarantee you anything. You know, you have to earn it. You know, you demanded I earned it. Every single day, whether it's during the season or in the off season, I felt as though I was representing you and I was representing all of New York. I did that in the best possible way I knew how. And I wanted to prove to you I belong, and you kept pushing me to prove it over and over again. I was always most comfortable on the field, especially at Yankee Stadium, playing in front of you. And I wanted you to be able to count on me. And to this day, especially right now in this moment, I still represent you. And it's been one of the greatest honors of my life. Finally, I, I want to conclude with a message to the players in Major League Baseball right now and the young kids who may be starting out with a dream just like I had. You know, this is a game that requires sacrifice, dedication, discipline, and focus. You know, it's a game of failure. It teaches you teamwork. It teaches you humility. So take care of it, protect it, respect it. Don't take the time you have to play for granted. And remember the most important thing, like I said earlier, it's more than just a game. You know, the greatest to ever play in the Hall of Fame family, they're all watching. And I personally can't wait to welcome a few of you on this very stage, just as I, as I have been by so many others. So thank you all once again. It's, it's, been, a, it's been a hell of a ride.